Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So we will be continuing with our binary search playlist, which is the part of the Strivers A to Z DSA course. In case you haven't checked it out yet, there's a link in the description. Please make sure you check it out. So we will be starting off with the pattern binary search on answers. And the first problem that we will be solving is find the square root of an integer. Now what does the problem state? The problem states that you're given an integer. Imagine I'm giving you the integer as 25. So the moment you say a square root of 25, the value is 5. If I tell you uh, n is 30, the square root of 30 is 5 point something. So you will have to return the integer value or the floor value of it. If I give you the value as n equal to 35, you take square root of 35, it is again 5 point something which is close to 6. But I will ask the floor value. If I say n is 36, then you say square root of 36 is 6 and then you return 6. So I want you to return me the floor of the square root of a given integer. So, so how do you solve this particular problem? One of the easiest ways is to probably use the function mat.square root in Java or the square root function in C++ and that will give us the answer. But we are going to learn the binary search method. Why? Because this is going to help us uh, solve a lot of problems. So what is uh, the naive way, like the linear search way? The linear search way, imagine I give you n is uh, 25. The linear search will be, I'll take 1, I'll do 1 into 1, that's 1, that's not 25. I take 2, 2 into 2, that's 4, that's not 25. I take 3, 3 into 3, that's 9, that's not 25. I take 4, 4 into 4, 16, that's not 25. I take 5, 5 into 5, that's 25, and I say, yes, this can be a possible answer. Or, what if uh, it was something like, just imagine, instead of a complete value, it was something like 28. In that case, you would have gone with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and whenever you had 6, 6 into 6 would have been 36, and the value 36 would have exceeded 28. So, the possible answer would have been 5. So we can linearly traverse, right? So what's the code for this? If I have to write the code, can I say the code will be for i equal to 1, i lesser than, maybe we can just leave this. What can be the like maximum answer if I have to ask you? For any value, what can be the maximum answer? For 1, it's 1 itself. The number itself can be the maximum possible answer. I know it will not be, but the maximum I can go is still n. Obviously, we will stop way before that, but we can go till here. Now, maybe I can keep the answer as 1 because that's the minimum possible answer as well. So, I'll keep the answer as 1. And I'll say, hey, if i into i is lesser than equal to n, then say answer equal to i and continue. Or else, if I'm going to the else part, what does it mean? It means it's greater than n. So I'll say break. Can I do this? I can. So this will be working, right? So if you take this particular example, 28, it goes for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the last value answer will be storing is 5. And after that, whenever i becomes 6, this condition is false. Hence, the break statement will be executed and it goes out of the for loop. So eventually the answer will be stored as 5 and that is our answer. So look at the pattern. What? Why didn't we stop at 5? I'm saying 1 might, might, might be an answer. I'm not sure. 2 might be an answer. I'm not sure. 3 might be an answer. I'm not sure. 4 might be an answer. I'm not sure. 5 might be an answer. I'm not sure. 6 is not an answer. 6 is definitely not an answer. Why? Because 6 into 6 is 36 and the possible like the value that is given to us is 28. So 6 is definitely not going to be an answer. And I'm very much sure that anything greater than 6, which is 7, 8, 9, will never be an answer. Will never be an answer because if you take 6, it's already exceeding. If I take anything greater than 6, that will also exceed very much sure. Thereby, I surely know anything after 6 will never be an answer. Whereas all of these can be my answer and I take always the maximum value. I take always the maximum value. So whenever you see such cases where 
till a certain point the answers are possible and after a certain point the answer is not possible we can always apply binary search on that remember this why you will understand as i show you the example so we are looking for n equal to 28 square root can i keep the low as 1 like just hypothetically i'm i'm not doing a binary search on an array i'm trying to find an answer so what can be the minimalistic answer 1 and what can be the highest answer that's definitely 28 nothing bigger than 28 can be my answer like i i'm not doing 28 into 28 i'm just thinking out of the box nothing bigger than 28 can be my answer for sure so i'm keeping low as 1 and we are keeping high as 28 So if I go across and take the mid value, what will be the mid value? One plus twenty-eight, that's twenty-nine by two, that's fourteen point five, that's fourteen in integer. So I can write fourteen. Now if I have to check, fourteen into fourteen is actually greater than twenty-eight. Fourteen into fourteen is actually greater than twenty-eight. So thereby, can I say if fourteen is not my answer? and i'm very much sure 15 16 and everything till 28 will never be my answer can i surely say this i can i can surely say this thereby what i do is i eliminate everything on the right why just because of this reason if i'm standing at a not possible stuff everything on the right will also be not possible so why do i consider the right portion so what i do is i eliminate the right portion and the moment i eliminate the high will be coming across to 13 the high will be coming across to 13 so we're just playing around with numbers we're not taking any array so high is 13 let me write that so the high is 13 this time where will the midpoint to can i say the mid will point to 13 plus 1 that is 14 by 2 7 obviously will 7 be my answer 7 into 7 is actually greater than 28 so 7 also cannot be my answer again i'm standing at a not possible so can i say everything to the right of 7 is also not possible obviously no thereby i say everything can be cancelled hence this high will move to 6 which is one place before mid simple binary search eliminating the right half high will be 6 perfect what will be the mid this time 1 plus 6 is 7 7 by 2 is 3.5 so the, thereby the mid will be 3 this time 3 into 3 is not greater than 28 so i'm saying maybe this 3 is an answer why because 3 into 3 is lesser than equal to 28 i'm not sure that this is an answer or not but this might be my answer like probably i'm standing somewhere here so this i'm standing in this possible section probably 3 might be my answer why because 3 into 3 is lesser than 28 so it's not the square root but it might be my answer so i'm saying hey answer can you store 3 hey answer can you store 3 he says okay let me store 3 now tell me one thing if i go on the left will that make sense or shall i go on the right to find a bigger number because if i've got 3 obviously 2 will never be my answer obviously 1 will never be my answer so can i surely say anything on the left will never be my answer i have taken the assumption of 3 being my answer but anything on the left will never be my answer i can thereby the low will go to 4 perfect let's take the low to 4 so the moment i take the low to 4 this time the mid will be low plus i 4 plus 6 that's 10 10 by 2 is 5 so i have 5 the moment i have 5 what do i check i again check the same thing 5 into 5 lesser than equal to 28 and i find yes it is 5 into 5 is lesser than 28 i say answer you got someone better please replace yourself because i'm looking for square root and i'm going to the right to find the biggest value that is lesser than equal to 28 and i'm got 5 so i know one thing probably i'm standing somewhere here and i can surely say anything to the left i don't need it i need the biggest value that is close to that value when i do a multiplication thereby i say can you please eliminate and take the low to this portion which is one place ahead of mid that is at high thereby we are at 6 i 
and the low points here and the high points here and the mid also points here so currently we are standing here point to note we are standing at a single value and this time when I do 6 into 6 that's greater than 28 so 6 cannot be my answer 6 cannot be my answer and if it cannot be my answer I say I am standing on the, this portion thereby the right portion will be eliminated and if the right portion is eliminated the high will always move one step back if the right portion remember this if not possible the right portion is eliminated if possible the left portion will be eliminated because I am looking for the possible answers thereby what happens I take the high to 5 and this is where we end this is where the binary search will end so if you remember in the initial lectures I told you one thing as of now you can play with this answer and you can always store your binary search answer but eventually as you go through you'll understand that one of the high or one of the low will always be pointing to the answer so in this case you can see that this variable high is actually pointing to your answer that is 5 and why did that happen the sole reason is since you're trying to uh, I'll just write it for you since you're trying to eliminate since you're trying to eliminate and this is the not possible zone so you're trying to move on this direction and that's why the high will cross the low and when you're trying because high was here initially at a not possible place and the low was at a possible place so since you're eliminating thereby the low will always move towards right and the high will always move towards left hence the low ends up pointing the low ends up pointing and the first place at the first place where it is not possible and the high and the high ends up pointing at the first place which is possible so to repeat the low was at starting pointing to a place where it is possible the high was pointing to a place where it was not possible and they're trying to move and on moving they'll come to a place where it is not possible this will come to a place where it is possible hence the high will always be storing your answer so in order to understand this much better, what I'll tell you is take some more examples and take your pen and paper and try to do the dry run and you'll eventually understand how does the binary search work in this case. So we have pretty much done this stuff. Can I say that this line was the linear search and because of this line, the complexity was near about B go of N, near about B go of N, but, but this concept will now be replaced with binary search because I'm not going through the iterative stuff. Instead of that, what I'm doing is, I'm saying, hey, listen, you're given a number, thereby the low will be one, the high will be n in this case, and we can keep the answer so that you can understand it in a much better way. I can say while low lesser than equal to high, and inside that I can write mid equal to low plus high by 2 and after that can you say if mid cross mid is lesser than or equal to the n then your possible answer can be this mid can be but I'm looking for a bigger value every time because this might be it but maybe someone else can be so I will always go and eliminate the left half and I'll move on the right perfect or else if this is not possible this is not an answer look for smaller values look for smaller values that is eliminate the right half quite simple once you're done with this either you can return the high or you can return the answer that is your choice you can return either of them and that will work so if you remember at the beginning of this lecture i told you that we will be doing this pattern binary search on answers so remember one thing whatever problem you will see in the future on binary search on answers they will always be focused on this thing that you always know the range of answers like in this question I was being asked to find the square root of n and it was being asked floor of that square root of n that was the question if I have to like uh, modify the problem statement it will be find the maximum integer find the maximum number or integer which on squaring is lesser than n can i say this because 5 was the maximum integer which on squaring was lesser than equal to 28 because 6 on squaring was greater than 28 
4 was also a possible answer but i was being asked to figure out the max integer so across all the questions on binary search on answers they'll be asked to find minimum possible integer or maximum possible integer which can be your answer so problem statements will vary and we will be solving a bunch of those in the upcoming lectures but 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 remember whenever you see something like min or max find out the minimum integer find out the maximum integer and and if in a question you are sure that the answer like in this case the answer was always between 1 and n if you are sure about the answer range and they're asking you to find the minimum and maximum in that answer range always binary search always and the pattern will be very simple you do the binary search and this map uh, this one is known as the check box this is the check because this was the question this was the question check condition the question was stating maximum integer whose squaring is less than equal to n and that is what i did the check condition binary search under the check condition got it so let's quickly jump into the code editor by the way you can find out the problem link in the description So the first thing to observe is uh, I'm taking long, long. Why? Because imagine uh, you've been given ten to the power nine as n. So the moment you do ten to the power nine into ten to the power nine, it might overflow. So just take care of that and take long, long. So in certain cases, you have to keep this in mind. Otherwise, there will be overflow cases and you'll get a wrong answer. So if you try to submit this, this will be running absolutely fine. So I hope you have understood everything. And in case you're still watching, please, please do consider giving us that like. And if you're new to our channel, please, please do consider giving us that subscribe as well. And uh, yeah, if you haven't followed me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter, all the links will be in the description. But this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, bye bye. Take care.